Welcome this Sunday morning as we meet together over the internet to watch uh, our Sunday worship. Uh, it's good to have you here virtually, if not physically. Um, wherever you are in the world, you are welcome. Uh, we are um, having different preachers over the next few weeks, as we have been doing, and I'm really excited that this Sunday, as we would have been doing had we been here this morning, uh, we're welcoming our district chair, Reverend Helen Kirk, to bring God's word to us this morning. But as we begin, let's open with some words of praise. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We give thanks to you, Lord, for you have done marvellous things. When we were walking in darkness, you were there. When we were kneeling in weakness, you were there. When we were feeling worthless, you were there. When we were needing forgiveness, you were there. When we were searching for your grace, you were there. We give thanks to you, Lord, for you have done marvellous things. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And so let's continue our worship of God in song.
So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together And so let us come before God in prayer. Let's pray. Lord our God, we bring you all our praise and worship this morning, all the things that are due to your amazing and wonderful name, giving thanks and praise for all that you are and all that you have done. Lord, we know that we are not worthy of all of these things. We're not worthy of all that you've gifted to us and all that you've done for us. Lord, even today we know that we have said and done things that don't honour you and don't honour uh, us being called Christian. We just take a moment, it's quiet now, to think of those things, not just today, but over the past few days that we know we need to say sorry to God for this morning. God, we ask your forgiveness and we hear the words of Jesus who said, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God for his grace and his mercy toward each and every one of us. And Lord, we want to give you thanks for all that is, uh, that's happening at the moment, all the good things that are still going on in the world. And so we're going to take some time for you to share with your family uh, or those who are around you or just in silence uh, those things that you just simply want to say thank you to God for, even if it is just that you are safe and well at this time. And so for all these things, God, we give you thanks. And we bring our prayers together with countless people around the world who today will also pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we've got a little quiz for you this morning. This morning's Gospel reading is from John's Gospel and is a story all about Jesus as the Good Shepherd. And in that story, it tells us that the sheep recognise the voice of their shepherd. So this morning, I thought we'd have a little quiz to see if you could identify some famous people and characters just from their voice. OK, so I'm going to play you a little clip. Have a listen, see if you can work out who it is. Are you ready? Here comes the first one. To infinity and beyond! Do you want to hear that again? Here it comes again. To infinity and beyond! So who was it? Shout it out! Of course, it's Buzz Lightyear. Brilliant. Are you ready for another one? Here comes the second one. And I like warm hugs. Should we hear that again? And I like warm hugs. So who was it? Shout out. Of course, it was Olaf, our favorite. Let's have a listen to the whole of that bit. <sighs> All right, let's start this thing over. Hi, everyone. I'm Olaf. And I like warm hugs. OK, so here's the third one. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. Let's have it again. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming. Who was it? Of course, it's Dory. How about this one? Do. Oh, do not. There is no try. This one's for a bit of a different generation, maybe. Let's try that again. Do. Oh, do not. There is no try. Any ideas? Of course. Who else could it be but Yoda from Star Wars? OK, here's the last one. This is for those of you who may be a little bit more long in the tooth, shall we say. I don't believe it! Oh, I wonder. Let's have that one again. I don't believe it! Any ideas? Victor Meldry from One Foot in the Grave. Some of us grew up watching that brilliant comedy series. If you've never seen it, go find some clips on YouTube. It's really, really funny. British comedy is at its best. Interestingly, with these clips, it's not just about recognising the, the voice, recognising the, the tones and the volume and everything else about the voice, but it's also about recognising what they say, their catchphrases. And maybe you can think of some other characters or, or uh, actors or anything like that that have got their own catchphrases. Comedians often have had them in the past, haven't they? You see, we don't just recognise God's voice because we hear it a lot. Yes, we do. We hear the voice because it's familiar to us and we recognise it as God's voice. But it's also about what God says to us. Um, when we hear God's voice, um, it, it's there's something familiar about the fact that actually what God says to us feels right. Uh, it doesn't feel alien to us. And that's sometimes how we identify God's voice or whether that's just other things that are kind of coming into our head, especially at difficult times like this. Um, identifying God's voice is not just about the familiarity, but it's also about discerning what God is saying. Is what is being said, is that voice God's voice or are we listening to something else in the world? And so that's my challenge to you this week. How can we listen to God's voice in all that's going on in the mo at the moment? Um, are we listening for God's voice? And are we identifying not just the voice, but what God says? 
I will set my face to seek the Lord. I will set my face to seek the Lord. Give my full attention to my God. I will listen for His voice. I will listen for His voice. I will set my face to seek the Lord. I will set my face to seek the Lord. Give my full attention to my God. I will listen for His voice. I will listen. parable of the shepherd. Jesus said, I am telling you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbed in some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who goes in through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. The sheep hear his voice as he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he has brought them out, brought them out he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice they will not follow someone else instead they will run away from such a person because they do not know his voice jesus told them this parable but they did not understand what he meant so jesus said again i am telling you the truth i am the gate for the sheep all others who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever comes in by me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill and destroy. I have come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness. Acts chapter 2 
beginning to read at verse 42. The Fellowship of the Believers They devoted themselves to the Apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the Apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Thanks be to God. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm really pleased and uh, excited to welcome uh, Helen to our worship today, um, our district chair. I want to thank her for all that she's been doing over the past few weeks in supporting us as ministers and, uh, and doing all that she can in this difficult time. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to her as she brings God's word to us. One more time. The image of God as a shepherd is a common image throughout the Bible. He's the one who cares for his flock, who leads them and looks after them. It is an image for God's relationship with his people. In Mediterranean lands, moving livestock seasonally between winter and summer pastures is still common practice. It's not uncommon for a number of shepherds to keep their sheep in a communal pen. The shepherd then knowing his own sheep would call them in the morning, lead them out of the pen and to the best pasture. We saw that in that little video. The sheep know the voice of their shepherd and they follow. They're not going to follow somebody they don't know. They follow the voice that they trust. It's got me thinking about the voices that we listen to. And certainly there are many voices desperately trying to get our ear at any time. News organisations offer us perspectives on the world. Advertisers sell us a lifestyle to make us happy. Religion offers us their truth. Social media. Social media uh, where we compare our life to others. Listening to all those voices that say we should be happier or slimmer or fitter 
or stockpile food or toilet roll, whatever it is. And then of course there's the inner voice that pops up every now and then and unexpectedly shouts in our ear that reminds us of where we have come from and perhaps that we are not who we would want to be. So who do we listen to? How do we hear the voice of the shepherd, the voice of God amidst such noise? And especially now, when we live with that constant sense of, of dis-ease, uh, that underlying anxiety as our normal routines and relationships have been disturbed. Among all that noise, both external and internal, how do we hear the voice of God? There is an old story. It's done the rounds many times and you have probably heard it from other preachers. It's the story of the Native American Indian who is one day walking through Times Square at rush hour with a friend. There is a huge amount of noise. A car, horns, traffic, hundreds of people. And in the midst of this he stops and says, I can hear a cricket. His friend says, uh, don't be ridiculous. How can you hear a cricket with all this noise going on? Uh, but he persists. He goes over to some bushes, he searches through, and lo and behold, there is a cricket. His friend says to him, you must have the hearing of a superhero to hear that amidst all this noise. And he says, no, it is just that I am tuned into it because this matters to me. What are the voices that we hear now? Please don't beat yourself up if you are struggling to hear the voice of God for yourself at this time. Perhaps be aware of the voices that you do hear, the noise that fills our minds and our lives. Which voices are we tuned into? We have to remember, of course, that the words of Jesus would have been told to the early church, a people who were working out what the Christian faith meant amidst a myriad of different voices, each proclaiming that their way was right. It's something that we've wrestled with as a church throughout the centuries. How do we hear the voice of the shepherd? The passage from Acts 2 would normally be somewhere I would go uh, as an answer to that question. Because it, it gives us a picture of an ideal church. A church that is in tune with Jesus, that listens and hears the voice of their Lord. And of course they do this through fellowship with each other. They meet together, they listen to each other, they open uh, God's word together, they share bread and wine, uh, and they are shaped by the challenge of community and their understanding grows and they know God's voice. But how do we do that now? when we cannot meet? How do we hear the voice of the shepherd in our present circumstances? When we lived in Aylesbury, we had a, a number of our congregation who worked in London and commuted to London. And uh, one of our guys told us this story one day. It had bowled him over. He and some of his colleagues had been rushing to a meeting, trying to catch a tube because they were running late. And as they headed towards the tube station, just outside, there was a fruit stand. A simple stand that was there every single day. And a guy and sometimes his little boy were there selling fruit. As my friend and his colleagues rushed past to get to the tube, they knocked the fruit sand and sent all of its contents flying. 
they carried on down the steps. But my friend suddenly, with a qualm of conscience, realised that he couldn't just leave the debris behind. And so he turned round and went back and began to pick up the fruit that had been thrown to the floor. And all the time, the little boy was watching him. Uh, and as he helped the man get the fruit back on the store and went to his wallet to pull out some money to compensate for the loss, the little boy still stared. Are you okay? He said to him. And this was the bit that blew my friend away because the little boy just said are you Jesus? are you Jesus? small acts of kindness great acts of self-sacrifice there is Jesus there is the voice of the shepherd my parents who are in their 80s and are self-isolating keep telling me every day when I FaceTime them we are, we are so lucky, we're lucky we have family and we have the church and, and people keep in touch. A few days ago though my dad said, do you know we've lived in this house for 50 years. 50 years ago we knew all the neighbours and yet in recent years we hardly knew anybody. And yet in the last weeks we have got to know so many of them as they have offered to help and support us. Are you Jesus? Is this the voice of the shepherd? In my job over the last few weeks, I have talked to more people about faith than about the function of the church. And it is refreshing for here is the voice of God. And so maybe God is speaking loud and clear, but in different ways. Through the things that matter most, through the priorities, through the beauty of our world, the communities of care, through the value given to those who have never been valued, through compassion and hope. And although we cannot break bread, Perhaps our lives are being broken open to hear God in new ways. How do we know it is the voice of the shepherd? Well, because as Jesus says, it is a life-giving voice. Life in abundance. So where are those voices? Life-giving, hope-filled, careful, justice-seeking where are those voices? Let us listen to them. Let us be attuned to them. For in them, we hear the voice of the shepherd. Amen.
for our intercessions today. I'm going to leave these to you. There's so many things that we need to uh, be praying about, about those who we know who have been bereaved in particular, those who are uh, finding this time particularly difficult. Each one of you will know different people, different situations. And so uh, I'm, I want to place uh, the power of this, these prayers into your hands this morning. And so I'll open and then we'll leave uh, just a few minutes uh, quiet so you can either share those things with those around you and maybe just have a prayerful conversation acknowledging God's presence in your everyday uh, in the conversations that you share and concern for others or simply sitting in silence um, uh, and just calling to mind those uh, people situations those things that we know we need to pray for today so let's pray loving Heavenly Father, in faith and in trust, we pray to you, Lord our God, knowing that you hold all of these things in your hands, knowing that you hear every single word, every word that is on our lips, but every word that is stuck in our hearts, unable to find a way out. And so we bring our prayers to you this morning. in faith and in trust and in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray all of these things, leaving them with you, Lord, because your burden is easy and light. You ask us to cast our cares on you. Lord, help us to be relieved of our burden and instead take on the burden of grace and goodness and love that is yours. And so we pray in the precious name of our risen Saviour and Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen.
to the conclusion of our worship this morning. I pray that as we go through this week, we will all hear God's voice, the voice of the shepherd calling us, reassuring us that even in hearing his voice, we would know his presence with us. So be blessed in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as you go into your week. And we'll see you again soon. Amen.